I am Adam Levine. I'm the Associate Director at the Toledo Museum of Art, but I am also the Associate Curator of Ancient Art, uh, and I'm here with our conservator. Hi, I'm Suzanne Hargrove. I'm Head of Conservation here at the Toledo Museum of Art. And we are here to, should I just keep rolling? Sure. All right. We are here to talk to you about some ancient art, which is good for me, uh, and specifically about garnets, um, those fabulous red stones uh, which were used, as we can see here, and some examples from the Hellenistic period straight through um, to the Byzantine period. Uh, so a note on nomenclature. Uh, of course, we are, as you may have heard, we refer to the Byzantines as Byzantines, but that is a totally modern construction. The Byzantines thought of themselves as Romans and called themselves Romanitas right up until uh, Constantinople fell in 1453. So it's no surprise to see continuity over here the better part of a millennium. Okay. So we have five objects here, or five pairs of objects, groupings of objects, I should say. A uh, diadem, a Hellenistic diadem, um, a roughly contemporaneous garnet image of Heracles, uh, a pair of earrings, they're called navicella earrings uh, because they're shaped like the keel of a boat. Okay. Uh, a lovely little folly, um, uh, uh, which is probably related to a suite of objects called griot, G-R-Y-L-L-O-I, does not look like it sounds, uh, which are sort of two-headed fantastical creatures normally cut into stone, normally in an intaglio process, here shown in relief. And this magnificent uh, sixth century, hard to imagine it's for anyone other than the imperial court, uh, open work gold bracelet. The open work is a technique called opus interessile with magnificent um, uh, emeralds uh, and sapphires and pearls, but also, of course, garnets. Mm -hmm. uh, there's much to say about each of these objects individually, but focusing on garnet in particular, um, what is of note um, is that if you look at these um, in sort of rough chronological progression, um, what you see is you see the interest in garnet persists. And part of the reason for the interest in garnet um, uh, is uh, the rich redness of the stone. Mm -hmm. um, while it is imbued with different symbolic values depending on the cultural and religious system. Um, broadly speaking, red is considered a significant culture in many different religions around the world today, and it was just so in late antiquity. But really, there is something about the contrast that that red provides with gold, which seems to right. provide a real sort of warmth uh, and aesthetic appeal, which you can see used in widely varying styles. Uh, the diadem features a rather small garnet uh, it would have been worn as a uh, headdress, that's what a diadem was, and probably would have been given on the occasion of a wedding to a bride. Okay. Um, the, the diadem itself is actually fabricated in seven parts. The garnet set into this knot at the center, known as a Heracles knot, a knot associated with the mythical um, demigod Heracles. And it was since it's difficult to, to because undo. Because it's difficult right. or impossible to untie, um, and it is a probably, in this instance, a symbol of the love of the two people getting married, um, and that garnet at the center, therefore, could be interpreted as uh, the love itself, um, or the preciousness of the relationship, etc., okay. etc. Right. Here we have an image of Heracles himself. Um, you can see that the bottom has been pierced, so we think this probably would have sat on a pedestal of some sort. Okay. Um, it is probably not jewelry, and uh, it's hard to imagine how it would have been worn. Its use remains a mystery, um, but we do know that there were um, sort of shrines in homes, um, particularly in the Roman period, mm. and it's not impossible to imagine. This. So he could be like in a lararium, uh, like have, a household pot guy? Pot or... pot potentially. Um, I mean, the best part about our jobs is we can come up with all sorts of yes. hypotheses, and as long as they're not falsifiable, no one can tell us we're wrong. Right. Um, so it could have been a laris. Um, uh, but also could have been decorative, right? The people right. who lived in antiquity were people. Yeah. Um, and people would have collected, people would have liked luxury items, people, the, the whole idea of the medieval or the Renaissance medieval, Kunstkammer, right? These pe people had collecting oh, impulses yeah. then. 
just as we do today. Well, and there are wonderful examples in other types of gemstones like amethyst that's right. and rock crystal and that's, calcidony. And that's, that's exactly. Some, some of which, unfortunately, are not in this particular shot, but are just, yeah. just nearby. Um, uh, and then just sort of rounding things out, uh, we have these extraordinarily heavy earrings. Um, uh, hard to imagine precisely when they would have been worn. Um, if you're able to zoom in, you can see these two lovely birds. Um, uh, the, I'm sure that someone could attribute those birds. Perhaps they're sort of egrets of sorts or, or doves, um, but uh, unbelievably fine worksmanship and granulation, those little mm -hmm. dots that have been placed on them, but sort of um, generalized birds, um, nothing overly specific in my view about the iconography. Um, but sort of showing some of the this Eastern influence, these heraldic two animals around, centered around this projected, elevated, teardrop-shaped garnet. And this would be a, a, a tremendous statement of wealth and power on the part of uh, perhaps the husband of the lady wearing these. Or... <laughs> That's exactly right. Much, much akin to our now four centuries later, um, but no less extraordinary uh, bracelet or arm cuff. Um, I have pretty big wrists and you can see that you can probably get my wrists through there pretty easily. Suzanne will carefully remove to show. I love the inner, the inner details it's, too. It's it, just phenomenal. That's, so this would have been produced um, un, unlike, so there are different methods for working metal. There's hammering, like right, you say. There's uh, sort of working with a chisel after the fact, chasing, um, but here you see pierce work. And right. You see the same thing. Um, uh, you see the same thing uh, in the Navicella earrings as well. I think, and right, Sus Suzanne is also a metal worker, so yes. she can comment. Yep. But one of one of the great hallmarks, uh, or one of the hallmarks of great pierce work, is not just the fineness of detail. Um, and in this case, the ornateness of the geometric pattern. But it's also, it's hard to tell from which direction the thing was pierced. Mm -hmm. It's, sm right. it's smooth, it's beautiful, it edges. feels almost yeah. manufactured when in fact, right, the amount of time that was spent creating a perfect object, a seamless experience for the wearer um, uh, is, right, the, the, the absence of anything is the presence of a great right. deal of work, right. so to speak. Um, and our final object um, is this massive garnet. Um, just although the, the worksmanship may not be quite the same as our delicate sort of Heracles just above, um, uh, the size of it is extraordinary. And in fact, you can see there are some widely different, widely varying sizes here. Um, it's really sort of uh, luxury arts mm -hmm. um, explode after Alexander's conquest in the East. Um, uh, the amount of wealth that those conquests were able to um, commute back to uh, the Hellenistic Empire created this interest in decadence um, uh, and, uh, uh, and in conspicuous consumption. Right. Uh, and in fact... Um, well, and the Athenians had sumptuary laws, so this is sort <laughs> that's of... Right. Brushing that all away. That's right. Some story laws that they more they sometimes didn't adhere yes. to. Of course, <laughs> laws are laws are meant to be broken. Right. Um, but but the the influx of wealth at the scale of an empire, as opposed to the scale of a very powerful city state, um, uh, with its treasuries, etc., um, was unprecedented. Um, and plenty sort of remarked that it was sort of this decadence which ultimately resulted in the fall of the Roman Empire. You mm. can see the traces of that here, even if the history isn't quite right, um, and maybe the causes aren't either. But with this persistence of interest in garnets, um, as the empire orients itself further and further to the east over time, there's the capacity for larger and larger garnets. Right. The, the center for large garnet production or mining in the world was and remains India. Mm. Um, and if there are garnets from elsewhere, um, right. including the modern day Czech Republic in particular. Right. Um, but uh, I know most of them are traceable to Rajasthan. But most of the them are traceable thing. to Rajasthan. Yeah. That's exactly right. And th But that trade really only opens up with Rome in volume in the second century. Okay. So okay. it's really at the second century that you start seeing these really large garnets appearing on the market. Right. Um, 
emeralds, right? Um, sapphires also had eastern extraction. Emeralds were particularly prized um, uh, if they were from Cyprus, mm -hmm. um, the great sort of mines. Uh, um, uh, but all of these gems have stories. Um, uh, there's a, a wonderful book from the mid '80s, uh, called, an edited on called "The Social Life of Things," right? Uh, and it focuses very much on sort of made objects, um, but all of these objects have their own biographies, and all of these objects as constituents or have constituent parts that each have their own biographies. Right. Um, and when you think about where these things came from and how they were assembled. It makes it all the more remarkable. Oh yeah, um, that well, they're not only like here. This is a statement of how yeah. much wealth can, and, and trade can be commanded to bring all of these disparate elements together, and then which is exactly why it's hard to the imagine stunning craftsmanship. And how could it be for anyone other than you know the I I, I joke. I can't tell you that Empress Theodora or someone in her court wore that, but you can't but it tell me someone looks like did something it. Something she so. would wear. Yes, yes. that's right. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, and we even see representations of her in enormous earrings, like the ones that we're seeing here. That's right. And even when, uh, if there's an opportunity for you to cut in a shot of uh, the mosaics in San Vitale and oh, Modena, yeah. she and her court, you'll see, um, uh, you'll see sort of uh, decadent bracelets oh, like yeah. this alluded to. I mean, just, her getup is not quite she's dripping, this, but, she's, yeah. but she is dripping with pearls and what we can only assume are large garments. Yeah.